save our planet. Livestock contributes more to climate change than previous estimates. In 2006, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization had estimated that animal raising for meat and dairy is responsible for 18% of global warming. However, it is becoming increasingly clear to scientists that the livestock industry is playing a more significant role. If we look at uh, the proportion of greenhouse gas emissions from different parts of livestock production, Dr. Rajendra Pachuri, Chief of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, made the following remark during a talk he gave in September 2008 on the role of reducing meat consumption in addressing global warming. Since people found out about uh, this talk that I was going to give here today, I've received a number of emails from people that I respect saying that the 18% figure is an underestimate. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a low estimate and in actual fact it's much higher. Greenhouse gases are emitted during virtually every step of the meat producing process. Of the three major greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide, methane is up to 72 times more potent than CO2, while nitrous oxide is up to 300 times more potent. To arrive at the potency of these gases, the general method is to average over a 100-year period. However, methane in particular is a much shorter-lived gas. Scientists have thus determined that it is more accurate to average methane's potency over 20 years. This gives methane a 72 times greater potency than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. U.S. physicist Noam Moore of the New York University Polytechnic Institute stated the following in a telephone interview with Supreme Master Television. When measured over 100 years, the United Nations said animal agriculture is responsible for 18% of global warming emissions, which is an enormous amount, far more than all transportation put together. If you look at it on a shorter term, methane has an outsized effect, and so that number goes up. The true value in the near term, when we take all these things into account, is much higher. If you look at these reports, I'll suggest it has about 25 times the impact of CO2, but really when it's up there in the atmosphere doing its work, it's 72 times the impact and that, uh, that makes a big difference. At 37% of global methane emissions, livestock is the single largest source of human-caused methane. Sure, we have to deal with CO2 in the long run. But if you want to make an impact on climate in the next 20 years, the place to do it is with the shorter-lived greenhouse gases, the most important of which is methane. So of the emissions in the next 20 years, the CO2 in this year's emissions will only be about 40% um, of the total warming. The other 60% or more will be from the shorter-lived gases most important of which is methane. In addition, according to U.S. physicist Noam Moore, livestock has an even larger share of emissions when yet another unaccounted factor is acknowledged. Aerosols or particles released along with CO2 from burning fossil fuels that, despite their detrimental health aspects, actually have a cooling effect. So when you consider aerosols and look at the net effects of burning fossil fuels, the carbon dioxide released keeps the planet aerosols cool the planet, and the net effect roughly cancels each other out. That means that most of the warming we've seen historically, and are likely to see in the near future, comes from other gases, mainly methane. Already, livestock is 20% of all greenhouse gas emissions. Excuse me, the meat system includes the animals, includes growing the food for the animals, includes the transport of the meat, includes the um, fertilizer to grow the food, to, grow, to feed the meat, and that's with not treating methane any more than the sort of normal way it's used. If you treat it more, then that 20% will go up to maybe 30%. So the 30% in the next 20 years is going to be due to meat production. Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a renowned researcher and internationally best-selling author of The China Study, also indicated that livestock's role in heating the planet is much bigger. And I just had some information just recently that the new figures now indicate that at least half of the greenhouse gases that are out there now, not, not the 15 or 20 percent, at least half and maybe considerably more, are due to livestock production. We thank the distinguished scientists for confirming the importance of reducing meat consumption to minimize methane emissions. May everyone soon join in the sustainable plant-based solution to most effectively halt global warming for all inhabitants of our Earth.
In a July 2008 video conference with our association members in Thailand, Supreme Master Ching Hai revealed through her deep insight the reality of animal agriculture's cumulative cause in global warming. Because meat producing causes 80% of global warming. Transportation, water, deforestation, refrigeration, medical care for animals and humans, and etc., etc. All kind of pollution coming from meat production. It's not just the land that they use, it's not just the methane gas and uh, nitrous oxide that they produce. It is all these byproducts, there's no end to the list. We cannot rely on green technology alone to save the planet because the worst cause of it is from the meat industry. Everybody knows it. All the scientists already reported to us. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic-resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella, bird flu, mad cow disease, or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease, or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock, some of the costs of meat eating, infertility, eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease, over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer, over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. Diabetes, 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion U.S. dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, cause world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption, bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat, breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Listeria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes, and heart disease, linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen, lactose intolerance, plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com.